Chancellor Wilson, Dean Corman, Professor Brumer, graduates, ladies and gentlemen. The admonition it goes without saying is always an introduction to saying. So I do say that I am greatly pleased and I feel considerably elevated to have been selected to receive the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa from the University of Toronto. I have had the good fortune to be able to pursue my passion for more than 60 years and to have worked with many brilliant collaborators who have become friends and an extended family. An honor awarded to me is an honor awarded to them. I've been asked to make a few remarks to all of you receiving degrees today. I'll be brief, but I cannot match the painter Salvador Dali who at an occasion something like this one is reported to have stood up and said, I will be so brief I've already finished, and sat down. <laughs> it's traditional for a convocation speaker to exhort graduates to follow their own interests, to achieve their goals by being true to themselves. I'm sympathetic with that advice, but today I want to focus your attention elsewhere. In the post-academic world you are joining, I wish you to accept responsibility for balancing individual and collective good in your support of the work of individuals and institutions. The argument for support of individuals is very simple. In the process of earning your degrees, you've been helped by many, directly or indirectly, your family, friends, fellow students, teachers and mentors, and the larger society that supports universities. I believe you've incurred an obligation to assist others to achieve their individual goals just as you have. The argument for the support of institutions is broader and is based on my view of a healthy society. First, I ask you to accept the social responsibility to value and support all intellectual activities irrespective of subject. If you're an engineer, support the arts. If you're a writer or a philosopher, keep up with and keep abreast of developments and sciences. Remain open-minded with respect to ideas from all over the universe of intellectual activity. Second, I wish to engage your permanent support for a particular class of institutions, namely universities. You've been fortunate to be educated at the University of Toronto, a great university created and sustained by generations of scholars, by your predecessor students, and by the general public. I believe you have incurred an obligation to promote improved understanding of the role that Toronto and the role of other universities play in our society. Universities are arguably the longest lived corporate entities in our society. I take that longevity to be a signature of a consensus view that the work of universities is valuable to society. But what is that work? Certainly part of it is transmission of knowledge. But since the founding of the University of Bologna in 1088, the work of university has also been guided by the dual beliefs that ideas matter, and they matter irrespective of the, of the time scale for their practical implementation and that improved understanding any field is a contribution to our intellectual heritage. That consensus view of universities is currently under challenge by outspoken legislators and others who, for example, would require that university-based science produce so-called useful knowledge and that education focused primarily on workforce preparation we must all openly recognize that this emphasis on an improving the immediacy of practical usage of new knowledge and of education has a price, a high price. That price is diminution of the importance of ideas per se, ideas as such, as the seeds to future ideas. But it's ideas that power society. None of us can foresee the future which will present us with both shocks and opportunities of many kinds, and the resolution of those shocks and opportunities will require new ideas. Any diminution in the creation of new knowledge 
and of the importance of ideas will likely have adverse effects for society. The challenge we face now and that you'll face in the future is to improve public understanding of how society can best promote the contributions of universities to our intellectual heritage and thereby to our greater good. The future contributions of universities to the betterment of society will depend on how you confront that challenge. And I urge you to be active participants in the debate.